Et maintenant, je me tourne vers vous, Madame la Présidente de la Conférence générale. Tout au long de cette session, vous avez su faire valoir le point de vue de chacun, dans une atmosphère de respect mutuel. C'est le meilleur climat que l'on pouvait imaginer pour aborder les questions difficiles qui nous occupent l'esprit. Et en signe de notre reconnaissance, permettez que je veux remettre ce maillet ici, avec lequel vous pouvez aussi clôturer notre conférence générale. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you very much. I will use it at the very end. But you see, when you have a piano on the stage, something is going to happen. Just it would be good to open the piano, I mean. Shall I do that? Or? Okay. Dear friends, the General Conference has established two important international days, the World Radio Day and the International Jazz Day, each of them celebrating the art of listening, inspiration, connectivity, free flow of information, and free flow of emotion. I remember very well in my youth listening to Radio Free Europe or Radio Luxembourg or the BBC under the cover of my pillows, like millions of people behind the Iron Curtain, denied their right of free information and hungry for the news transmitted from the free world. And I remember the times, as a young broadcaster, using this medium for transmitting important messages, at times hidden between the spoken words to offer comfort and keep the glimmer of hope alive in people's heart. The proclamation of the World Radio Day proposed by Spain is an important gesture and tool for free flow of information. The human quest for freedom often finds expression in music. As you know, upon the proposal of the United States, supported by 17 other member states, including Hungary, the General Conference proclaimed the 30th of April as International Jazz Day. Jazz is a liberating experience. It is no wonder that as a gateway of personal freedom, jazz can, was perceived as a serious threat by totalitarian regimes. I remember again that in many countries, jazz was simply banned or considered dangerous because it is a tool for free fall of emotion. For me, jazz embodies perfectly the synthesis of different cultures and traditions into a common language of humanity. It is synonymous with the idea of rapprochement of cultures. Before I conclude my speech, I would like to ask my very dear friend, the celebrated jazz pianist, composer, musician, George Vukan to come to the stage and refresh our soul with the music, what he's bringing to us. Ladies and gentlemen, George Vukan.
Thank you very much. The maestro will come back. Madam Director General, dear friends, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, many of you may remember that in response to my official nomination for this post by the Executive Board, my spontaneous reflections touched upon Sir Georg Scholti, the great Hungarian-born conductor of the 20th century, whose life and works the General Conference has decided to celebrate next year. Thank you for that. He established the World Orchestra for Peace in 1995 to inspire leaders and politicians with a living example of international cooperation. Talking in tune was my main aim throughout the incredible few weeks of our general conference, talking with dignity to each other, even when our differences held sway, was my main preoccup preoccupation in the turbulent moments. Indeed, the differences were at times pronounced in our opinions and visions, and the spirit of consensus was difficult to bring to bear on some issues. We can have political differences. This is normal. For me, the question is, how do we handle them? I would still argue that we handle them through dialogue, through the art of cultural diplomacy, through the art of listening, in order to try not to misunderstand each other. We need to give a real sense to the notion of dialogue. Dialogus is a Greek compound word widely mistranslated and wrongly understood because of the confusion between duo and dia. It doesn't mean a conversation between two people or two groups, but an acceptance by two participants or more that they will compare and contrast their respective arguments to the very end. Dialogue is accordingly a perilous enterprise, for it implies a risk that either participant may find his or her argument transformed and thus their very identity put to the test. Dialogue is not designed to lead to a definite conclusion it retains, even when this is not apparent, a latent conversational quality. And this shines through in its written form. That keeps it alive. You will agree with me that we have to renew our commitment to intercultural dialogue, keeping in our hearts and minds to verses of Jalal al-Din Rumi. Half of me comes from here, half from everywhere. Half of me comes from the pearls of the sea. 
half from distant shores. We people of the world are connected to each other globally, and today our interdependence is greater than ever. My dear friends, our big family has gotten bigger. We have acquired two new associate members, Curaçao and St. Martin, a new member, South Sudan, and the decision has been made to admit another member, Palestine, to this organization. The new members of our family have rich cultures, histories, and fascinating traditions, and they are facing formidable challenges in securing a peaceful future for their children. As with all families, the new members enrich the diversity of UNESCO and compel us to seek ways to resolve the problems that their societies currently face. The ability to assist the fledgling members to build open, tolerant, and stable societies will serve as a litmus test for the relevance of UNESCO in the rapidly transforming world. We will all have to work in the concertated fashion to successfully pass this test. The price of a failure is prohibitively high. We need to remain true and committed to the mission of UNESCO, advancing through the educational and cultural and scientific relations of the peoples of the world, the objectives of international peace and of the common welfare of mankind, to overcome the existing divisions and to ensure a better future for our children. We should leave out the idea of the culture of peace. For as Maham Mahatma Gandhi has warned, if we practice an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, soon the whole world will be blind and toothless. Ladies and gentlemen, the real voyage of discovery, Marcel Proust has remarked, consists not in finding new lands, but in seeing with new eyes. The highly engaging and dynamic leaders forum is a good example of an innovative approach that enriched the work of the general conference with bold ideas expressed directly by the world leaders. These ideas, especially as they pertain to a culture of peace and to sustainable development, must be reflected in the strategic documents of UNESCO. I would like to congratulate the Secretariat and especially the Office of the Director General and the Bureau of Strategic Planning for such truly innovative elements of this general conference. The 36th session of the General Conference broke several records in a positive way. At its plenary sessions and within the various commissions and committees, it considered 80 draft resolutions, working tirelessly to fulfill its role as a policy setter of UNESCO. The conference benefited from the high-level engagement of numerous heads of state, presidents, prime ministers, ministers, and special guests. The general conference also oversaw the election of the new members of the executive board and of the various intergovernmental bodies. I congratulate the new members of these important organs of UNESCO and wish them success in carrying out their important duties. Dear colleagues, dear friends, we also need to remember that the strength of our organization lies in the internal unity and the cohesion amongst its constituent parts. UNESCO was conceived from the very beginning as a tripartite body with a general conference, an executive board, and the secretariat working in harmony in pursuit of the organization's constitutional mandate. The close collaboration among these three organs based on a culture of mutual trust, respect, 
and understanding of each other's roles and responsibilities will be ever more important for the organization in the trying times ahead. We, the member states of UNESCO, value greatly the dedicated work of the Secretariat towards achieving our noble mission and look forward to providing the necessary support and guidance. I strongly believe that we need to improve the visibility of the vital work carried out within UNESCO's bodies. As I have promised earlier, I am here for you with an open heart to listen to your comments, suggestions, or criticism as attentively as ever, work with you through disagreements, mediate when necessary, and seek universally acceptable solutions. We indeed have much to accomplish together. Distinguished delegates, the efforts required to ensure the successful performance of the General Conference are truly Herculean. I have witnessed them during this period, behind the scenes, in the corridors and the offices of the Secretariat. If you, the distinguished delegates, represent an orchestra of the nations of the world, the dedicated staff of the Secretariat truly run the show, making sure that all the conditions are in place for us to produce harmony and avoid cacophony in this hall. I have special gratitude to express to the leadership of this organization. First and foremost, to my dear friend, the Director General, wishing her all the strength, success, and wisdom, and offering my humble support in the coming journey of this organization. I wish to salute as well to the Deputy Director General and the Assistant Directors General. This was an extremely demanding session that you have managed with exceptional skill and professional capacity. It was a real pleasure for me to work closely with the Secretary and the Deputy Secretary of the General Conference, Michael Milward and Luis Salamancas. My big thank you goes to my new team, personal assistant Irakli Kodeli and Secretary of the President's Office, Ines Mans. We all acknowledge the de dedicated work of the support personnel, the interpreters, thank you, the translators, thank you, who have served with high competence and patience, as well as the printing departments, the security, the telephone, the IT services, the brilliant medical staff and the doctors, all those who spent countless hours for making this house a pleasant and welcoming place for thousands of people. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as the 36th session of the General Conference comes to an end, a new phase of our work is beginning. A phase that I consider most critical for all the organs of UNESCO. This is a complex responsibility on which we will have to deliver together in the spirit of unity and common purpose. Let me quote a Hungarian poet, Attila József. I want to work, for it is battle enough, having a past such as this to confess. In the Danube's waves, past, present, and future are all embracing in a soft caress. The great battle which our ancestors once fought resolves into peace through the memories and to settle at last our communal affairs remains our task and none too small it is. The poem is inspired by the river Danube, one of the largest rivers in Europe that connects diverse cultures and peoples. As you all know, I see our global culture space as a jewelry box. 
a source of inspiration and not a burden, like healthy roots that support colossal trees and their branches, our cultural roots provide us with identities, with inspiration, and with the awareness of the richness of cultures and traditions. I could not possibly demonstrate this message better than through a simple tune by Béla Bartók, An Evening at the Village. I will give the tune and George will create the orchestra.
Ladies and gentlemen, while we are watching these beautiful pictures, which will remember all the moments, what we experienced together. All oh, right, that was the moment I remember. And I would like really to say what a general conference it was. Thank you very much for all your ideas, for sharing all your experiences, being so honest. That was a great honor for me. And now, using this beautiful new gavel, I would like to declare that the 36th session of the General Conference of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is closed.